When you first start using flash, you're probably gonna get a lot of shots like these. Your light's spilling everywhere, it looks like a flash photograph, not great. But then with a bit of knowledge and practice with your lighting, you start getting images like these. The only difference between them is just light control. And that's what you're gonna learn in this video. Let's get into it. Friends, as my dad says, let's not beat around the bush. Let's get straight into this. Look, I want you to have three takeaways from this video. Number one is obviously light control. How do you control light where you want it to go, where you don't? Number two is gonna be understanding a bit of light quality, specifically diffused versus specular light. And number three, well, we're gonna work our way to this final image. Now I'm gonna introduce you to Kiara. This is our lovely model and one of my friends. And we'll link her up so you can give her a follow. And the overall set. We're in studio today, not because these are techniques that you need to use in the studio, because these are all techniques that I use on location, that I want you to use on location. It's very practical stuff. We're in the studio because I wanna have an equal comparison. I want you to be able to see exactly what every modifier is doing throughout this process. As far as the setup goes, in this bat-like configuration, we have a Profoto A10. I'm gonna be using two off-camera flashes. I have the Profoto A10s, but honestly use whatever you would like is gonna to be totally fine. We're starting with this butterfly light configuration so I can get a good light pattern that we can make comparisons against, okay? Let's talk about the modifiers you need. So for our final look, you'll want two flashes of your choice. For our modifiers, we're gonna be focusing around, well, the Mag Grid 2, the Mag Sphere 2, as well as the Mag Gel 2. And probably we're gonna be using a red. You might need two spheres for the ending piece. And by the way, I gotta say like, the new magnets on these, my son would, love these like just the it's so satisfying he likes satisfying videos you want to try it it's, it's nice practical. right it's practical like it. yeah Easy. i'm gonna take a shot without the the remote just so you can see that basically i'm setting the exposure to well see i don't want to get any ambient light like right here right so i'm just gonna go one two hundredth i'm gonna raise the aperture to f5.6 and right there, we've kind of knocked out all the ambient light. So all the light that you're gonna be seeing in these shots is light that's coming from your flashes. So the light is set to seven power, which is, I don't know, that's like one quarter power, one eighth power-ish. And we're gonna go ahead and just take our first shot and hopefully it's at the, the right power. So Kiara, you're gonna hold a pose and kind of hold throughout all the shots. There you go. Okay, so that's our bare flash. So we have this highlight that's right on Kiara. You can kind of see that the light's just hitting the entire scene, right? It's hitting the wall, everything. We have a little bit of a highlight towards the center and it kind of drops off as it goes out. The first thing that I wanna do is I want you to understand how the grid controls spill. So I'm gonna grab the mag grid tube by itself and we're gonna pop it on. That's cool, right? I'm gonna take the shot with the exact same settings. So I want you to see two things. Okay, so the first thing that you're probably noticing is that that pattern has just gotten really tight, right? The grid creates this sphere shape and it cuts off the light from touching anything else on the wall. So it gives us this funnel of light and it seems like magic, it really isn't. So if you look at the grid, of course it's not magic, duh. But anyway, if you look at this grid, from this angle, you can actually see through me. You can see through your grid, right? But as soon as you start to turn it, you actually cut off that angle. So this is exactly what a grid's doing. It's cutting off the angle of light so it goes in one direction only. You probably notice something else too though. If you actually compare the first shot and the second, despite being at the same power, the second shot is a bit darker. So it's worth knowing that a grid is gonna actually cut down on the light output just a bit as well. Anywhere between like a half to one stop. Okay, now let's go ahead and take this off and let's replace it with the MagSphere 2 because now we're gonna compare the bare flash against, well, what is the sphere gonna do with that bare flash? So the Mag Sphere 2 is gonna bounce light around. Kiara's gonna hold that same pose. I've got the light right on her. What's gonna happen here is if you compare it to the first shot, you'll notice that the shadows are a little bit softer. They're just not quite as edgy, but it's not a huge difference, right? We're gonna talk more about that later. A lot of people think that if a light is diffused, it means that it's soft soft versus hard light well that's based on size and we'll cover this in like the next one in this series it's still a small light source so it's still going to be a hard light but the light is a bit more diffused 
So if I put this image next to the other one with the bare flash and I zoom into the face, what this means is a specular light has light that goes directly to your subject. And because it's going straight to your subject like a bare flash, it's gonna bounce back. So a lot of the light rays bounce off and back into the camera, creating reflections and highlights that you might not want, right? Whereas a diffuse light bounces around. So it's bouncing around the mag sphere too. And basically, because it's bouncing around before it goes to our subject, less of that light bounces back into the camera and we get a more diffused light source. So it's a bit more pleasing. And also, if you zoom out on those images just a bit too, you'll see that the shape of that light, the pattern of the light is a bit more pleasing too with the sphere in place. But now I wanna to get to an awesome combo. One of my favorite combos, and you'll see Magbond users all over the place doing this, is they're gonna grab the mag grid too, and they're gonna pop it underneath the mag sphere. So let's do that. And you might think that, well, is that really gonna actually do anything? Absolutely. What's gonna happen is the light's gonna get funneled forward. You know what? I'm just gonna show you. Okay, let's take that same shot. This time I'm one stop higher in power. So the grid with the mag sphere now, we get a completely different look, right? If you compare this, well, with the sphere, what's happening is that it's making that grid pattern more pleasing, but the grid is still funneling light forward. So we still get kind of a tight light pattern, but that circular shape is so much better. That pattern is so much nicer. So the sphere is not only diffusing the light a bit, it's also making it more pleasing. Now let's put it all together and go for that final creative shot. Through the power of editing magic, I'm gonna break down this entire set because this was just for demo purposes. This isn't the practical setup that I would actually use. Okay, these are the typical stands that I'm using on location. This is a Manfrotto Nano stand. We're gonna place that here for right now because I actually wanna get the background light the way that I want first. And what I think is a really fun effect you can do this pretty much anywhere that you have a plain wall, is we're gonna create a sort of semi-silhouette shot. I'm gonna start actually with the background light. I usually like to get my background looking the way that I'd like it to, and then go from there. So grab your flash, grab a mag gel of whatever preference in terms of color, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use red, because I kind of dig the vibe. So this is where I'm gonna grab a second mag sphere too. I can sort of create a graduating pattern of light going across the frame. I'm gonna adjust the position of this just a little bit so it kind of hits a little bit more of this wall. We're gonna pull it back a little bit. And I'm kind of angling it so the right side almost kind of hits Kiara a little bit, creates a little bit of like an edge on her. Oh, I dig it. See that right side edge I love. And it kind of like hitting the wall and sort of trailing off to that side. You'll notice how the curve of the wall kind of creates a, a separate tone. If you don't like that, you could always just raise the flash up, but I'm okay with it. Let's get the main light up now. And with the main light up, we're gonna practice our new light control techniques. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you like, well, if we kind of light from this side, since she's sort of looking towards this side, if I position the light there and I take the shot without a modifier on it, then a lot of that flash ends up bleeding into our background, right? This is the issue with without using light control. Without using light control, our light's spilling all over the place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that grid plus sphere combo onto it. And I'm just gonna show you the difference right there. I'll raise it up a stop just so we have a little bit more power since our light's gonna drop a little bit in power with that combination. So now it's at one quarter power. And immediately that's so much better. And I love this. Now, one thing that I can do too is I can actually adjust the angle if I wanna go for something a bit more dramatic. So this looks good. But what I kind of want to do is almost like Kiara, sort of from the back side. So we're going to position it slightly behind. Kiara, bring the hands up as if you're in that pose. There. I'm going to position it right here, maybe a bit further back, to kind of create this highlight on her face and on her hands a little bit. And the rest of her body is going to kind of drop into a silhouette. And our power is a bit low, so I will also raise the power a little. Oh, and I dig that vibe, that looks so cool. So now we just gotta get the right pose. That's it for this video. We're gonna link up all the gear and the modifiers that we use in the description of the video. On top of that, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, what you guys wanna see in future tutorials, comment below. I read all your guys' comments and I get a lot of great ideas from them. So I'm gonna get back to shooting what I wanna shoot now. We'll see you guys next time.